seen Mike and Nancy since last summer. They they got tested and stayed with us a week last summer, but it was uh, it was good to uh, see them again. Somebody asked if we'd stayed the whole week, which I thought was quite hilarious, actually. Uh, we don't stay that long when we uh, when we travel. My wife uh, likes to be home quickly, and I have to say, as I get older, home looks pretty good to me too. You, uh, uh, I find that as I get older, I'm a, more and more of a, a creature of routine, and I can only be in my routine around the, the house. And when I'm on the road, it's not. Uh, it's not as easy. It sounds good, but it's not as, as good as it was maybe 20, 30 years ago. But, uh, but we did have a, a good trip, and uh, when Stephanie appeared on Thursday and uh, offered to play the piano, that was really good news. Uh, it, it makes my job a lot easier in planning for the service. Uh, I don't have to go online and look for versions that are being played with the proper number of verses and the right tempo. I can just email Stephanie and say a number such and such for the first hymn or second hymn. If I want praise and worship music, I let Sharon know and she does her magic and brings that up. So that was a, that was a good day. Thursday was a good day. So. That's basically the news. Okay. Uh, the next hymn, if I'm reading my handwriting correctly, is number 54. Uh, Come Thou Almighty King. So if you'd stand, and uh, we'll, we'll sing this together.
said, the spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children with them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth, and that every inclination of thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe them from the face of the earth, the human race I have created, and with them the animals and the birds and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But the Lord, uh, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, who walked faithfully with Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and full of violence. And God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both of them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you're to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark with lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth and destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has breath of life in it. Everything on the earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you and will enter the ark. You and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, two of every animal, every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come with you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food Noah did everything just as God had commanded him. Now, the first thing that stood out to me reading this, as somebody who does a little carpentry in my spare time, was I wonder what cypress is. So I looked it up. Of course, it's a hardwood. So I got to thinking about it, and I can only imagine in Bible times, right? And these are early Bible times, too. This is fairly, you know, not too far into the beginning of the world here. And he's got to build an entire ark out of hardwood by hand. Can you imagine the process he must have gone through? I mean, he probably didn't have any tools, or if he did, they were very limited. And so, that's something I never really thought of before. Well, how did this one man build this whole great big ark by himself on a hardwood, right? So, then I started looking up the, the specifications of this ark. And this would be about a football field and a half long. And to put it into perspective another way, this is about a little over half the size of the Titanic. And he's building it all by hand by himself on hardwood, if you can imagine. Not to mention, Noah was 480 years old when he started building the <laughs> Some of you guys complain you got to get out and go to the refrigerator. <laughs>
got there like this. God's given him this message. And it probably sounded crazy to him. I imagine it did. I, I can't imagine. And he probably never even seen a bowl before, let alone one that big. And so he's building all this. People are probably laughing at him and, and harassing him and calling him crazy and everything this whole time. But he keeps up and he keeps faithful to what God wants him to do. So, uh, chapter 7, verse 6. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. And on that very day, Noah said to his sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth, together with his wife, and the wives of his three sons entered the earth, uh, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kind. Every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have breathed life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals were going in, male and female, of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut the in. So Noah was the original old MacDonald. He had everything he could find on there and bear to do. I can just go and imagine being locked up in an ark for 40 days with every living animal on the face of the earth. Can you imagine? I bet the tigers and lions get pretty rowdy in there after a while. So Noah keeps after. So verse 17. For 40 days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. Everything that moved on the land perished, birds, livestock, wild animals, all creatures that swam over the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. The people, animals, and creatures that moved along the ground, and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. So, I can picture all of He's in the ark now. Here comes the water. Probably never built a, built a boat before. He's probably on his hands and knees praying to God, I hope I did this right. Don't let there be any leaks. Uh, chapter 8. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heaven had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the 17th day, of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Arad. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the top the tops of the mountains became visible. After forty days, Noah opened a window he made in the ark and sat on the rail, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground, but the dove could find nowhere to perch. As there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again he sent the dove out from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its feet was a freshly plucked olive leaf, and no one knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. By the first day of the first month, Noah's 600 and first year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 
27th year, uh, day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with the sons and his wife, his son's wives, and all the creatures and animals that move along the ground, and all the birds, everything that moves on the land came out of the ark one after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, taking some of the clean animals and clean birds. He sacrificed burnt offerings on them. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done, as long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and the dread you will the fear and the dread of you will fall on the beasts of the earth. And on all the birds of the sky, and every creature that moves along the ground, and on all the fish of the sea, they are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave the green plants, now I give you everything. But you must not eat the meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal, and from each human being to Whoever sheds blood by humans shall shed their own. Whoever sheds human blood by humans shall shed, shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. As for you, be fruitful, increase in number, multiply on the earth, and increase upon it. Then God said to Noah, and to his sons, with your descendants after you, I now establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you, with every living creature that was with you birds and the livestock and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth, I will establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by waters of the flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of my covenant I am making between you and me and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember the covenant between me and you and all the living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life. Now, that was a lot, but there's a method to that. First off, let me give you a little bit of background history on this rainbow thing. So, when I was in college, uh, they taught us something. I, I didn't realize this, but one of our college professors that taught the Old Testament was well versed in the, in the background history of these passages and the culture of the time. He was telling us about how in the time of the pharaohs, they would have a bow, a war bow, and it would have rainbow colored um, pieces of fabric and things tied off the bow. And when they went into war, he would take that bow with them, and that was his war bow. And so by God putting a rainbow in the sky, he's hanging up his war bow, right? That's, that's quite a symbolism there, when you think of it that way. And so God hung up his war bow and said, never again, never again, this is a covenant. So, you think about Noah, and you think about all this crazy stuff that happened. He's just sitting there one day, lounging on his on stump somewhere, probably. And God says, you got a lot of spare time on your hands, old man. Would you go out and build a great big ark? And he says, okay. So he goes out and builds this ark. 
Next thing he knows, here comes a bunch of water and he's in the ark and everybody else is dead and the way he's going, just like a just like an episode of uh, the love boat. <laughs> <laughs> Ships all right. So it all seems pretty fantastic to think about. But when you think about Noah, what must have been going on in his mind to get this command? Would have been very easy for Noah to say, that's crazy, that's not. something that seemed absolutely crazy at the time. How many times in our lives has God asked us to do something that seemed crazy at the time, we couldn't see any point to it, then again, it turned into this whole fantastic grand scheme that God had planned the whole time. And it made me think about that, and I was like, you know, that's happened to me before. And so I want you guys to remember that when God tells you something, you're thinking, you know, feel God telling you something, kind of that a little bit, and if you really feel that that's what he's telling you to do, don't be afraid to do it, no matter how crazy it might seem at the time. Because crazier things have happened, right? This old man, 480 years old, builds a great big boat, 600 years old, goes out on the cruise of a lifetime, and it turns into this whole thing that literally changes the world. Literally. And, but God always knew what
The story we just heard about uh, Noah and his family, I was thinking uh, uh, when they were on the ark, they were uh, the family of God. There was only one family. Uh, we're lucky in that we're part of a bigger uh, family of God. And our closing hymn today will be on uh, the screen. It's the Gator uh, hymn, uh, The Family of God. So if you look on the screen and we'll sing that. <laughs> Yes, yes. 